Hello, welcome to the second video in this series of in this series of videos looking at uh, der derivative of trig functions and derivative of exponential functions. In the previous video, we looked at all the derivatives of all the six different trig functions, um, and now we're going to look at why the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Um, sorry about that. Okay, uh, using a definition of the derivative, we have. E f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Limit as h goes to 0. And our function is e to the x. So we have e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h. Taking the limit as h goes to 0. Uh, the two terms in the numerator, they share something in common. We can take this e to the x plus h and break it down to be e to the x times e to the h. And now we can see that both of these terms have an e to the x in common. We can factor it out. Upon factoring it out, we could actually pull it all the way out the integral like we did with the sine and cosine proof. It's a limit as h goes to 0. There's no h's in e to the x. It can come outside. And now we have this limit as h goes to 0. e to the h minus 1 over h. We have to figure out what that limit is. It's a very special limit. In fact, uh, some people uh, view the definition of E using this particular limit. Um, and so what happens here is that if you go back to the, to the derivative and you plug x equals 0 in, you'll have exactly this limit here. So the derivative at 0, the slope of the tangent line at 0 is the value of this limit. Okay, now um, we have the function e to the x in red here, okay, and then I have the line y equals x drawn in as well. And then I have the tangent line drawn in at x equals 0. And the, the slope of that tangent line is the same as the slope of the line of y equals x, 1. So that limit is a 1. Therefore, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. There's something that's very special about this e to the x function. Of all the exponential functions, it's the one that has 1 as its derivative at x equals 0. Let's see that on the next slide. The takeaway from this slide, proving that e to the x's derivative is itself. Very strange. The rate of change function that, that you use to measure you know, how this function is changing at particular values of x, it's equal to the actual function value. Okay. Um, here's e to the x drawn in with a bunch of other exponential functions. I have e to the x in red again. Um, there's some functions that grow faster than it, just need a bigger base. So 4 to the x and 8 to the x. They're all drawn in there. And then there's a function that grows slower than it that uh, has a smaller base. e is 2.71, so 2. 2 to the x. I want you to notice the slope of these functions as um, as you as they go through the the y-axis at x equals 0 and y equals 1. At that point they all have different slopes. Okay and generically what we have is a to the x okay as long as a is greater than 0 we can say that these guys all have different slopes but only one of them the reason why e to the x is so special, it's the one that has a slope of 1. In general, when we go to set up that limit, we'll have the same value that we had before, but with an a in there. And uh, it turns out that the other guys, the slope at x equals 0 ends up being this limit. And if you work with it, you'll find out that it's the natural log of a. Therefore, you know, if there's an e in there for a, then yeah, natural log of e is exactly 1. So that's what me makes e to the x so special. Of all the exponential functions that happen to, you know, when x is 0, definitely y is 1, they all go through that one point, but only one of them has a slope of 1 for its tangent line. The rate of change of the function is exactly equal to the function. That's what makes e to the x so special. All right, let's look at an example question now that we know that e to the x's derivative is e to the x. Oh, darn. 
I just realized that that's e to the negative x, and we have not learned the chain rule yet. That's okay. We can we can talk about it now. It's fine. Um, the job in this question is to find the x values so that the function is equal to zero. The derivative is equal to zero. The derivative function is equal to zero. What x's make it equal to zero? And so it's a product rule. It's x times e to the negative x. We have to take the derivative of it. So we take the derivative of the first. x's derivative is 1 times e to the negative x. Now we do the other part, which is leave x alone. And we have to take the derivative of e to the negative x. Um, we haven't learned this yet, but we will in the next set of videos. We'll learn the chain rule. This is a function inside of a function. It's not just e to the x, it's e to the negative x. And in such a function, you take the derivative, but then you multiply by the derivative of the, in this case, the exponent, the derivative of the inside function. So e to the negative x's derivative is e to the negative x times a negative 1. And so this is the derivative in our job. Set it equal to 0. And solve for x. Okay, what we can do to make it simpler is to factor out what they have in common. Both of these have an e to the negative x in common. So we factor that out. The first term is left with a 1, and the second term is left with a negative x. So when we go to set this equal to 0, we have these two factors now. The product of two factors being equal to 0. One of them has to be 0. But really think about what e to the negative x does. The graph of it, it'll, it'll never be equal to 0. It asymptotically approaches 0, but it'll never be equal to zero. So then this derivative is supposed to be equal to zero. It's got to happen at x equals one. That's the x value that makes a derivative zero. All right, good job. Second derivative. Let's see if we can do it. This is our first introduction to the second derivative. It's the derivative of the derivative. Okay, so let's use this factored form here for our derivative, e to the negative x times 1 minus x. And we execute the, the, the product rule again, It's the product of two functions. So we take the derivative of the first, remember how it's e to the negative x times negative 1, uh, and multiply it by the second, and then we leave the first alone and multiply it by the derivative of the second, 1 minus x's derivative is negative 1. Factor out again, so this time, they both have negative e to the negative x in it. We can take not just e to the negative x, we can take the negative 1 out. Be careful though. What will it leave you with from the first term? You're taking out the entire red you know, derivative guy there. You're left with 1 minus x. For the second term, you've taken everything out. So you're left with the 1. So this guy here has a second derivative equal to negative e to the negative x and that's times 2 minus x. Now you want to know where this is equal to 0 at. The exponential function, whether you multiply it by negative 1 and reflect it across the, the, y, uh, the x axis, it doesn't matter. It'll never be equal to 0. So then this must be equal to 0 when x is equal to 2. Okay, that's the x value that makes the second derivative equal to 0. And the y value there would be 2e to the negative 2. Here's the graph of our function. And we just found the place where you have a horizontal tangent line. And we found the place where your second derivative is 0. We don't know what that means yet. It's our first introduction to the second derivative. But that's going to mean something to us later on. All right. Let's go ahead and end this video. Thank you for watching. Um, my name is Nakai Rimmer. And I will... Um, be happy to help you. If you're needing help, reach out to me. Comment down below. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.